So for um, number 12, they want us to take the area between these two curves and then revolve it about the x-axis. So um, in the interest of time, I've gone and I've put these two equations in a graphing calculator. And we can see here that they intersect at the point y is equal to 0 and y is equal to 4. Um, and if you were confused how I got that, you can just set these equations equal to each other. So you have that um, 4y squared minus y cubed is equal to 0. And if you factor that out, you're going to see that y is equal to 0 or y is equal to 4. Um, so once we have this, they want us to revolve it about the x-axis. So when we revolve it, um, what is happening is we're having these this little chunk here. And this chunk is the difference from where it touches this orange curve all the way out to the y-axis. So this gets revolved around the x-axis like so. Um, it forms this cylinder, right? And the cylinder here, it's think of it being like a paper sheet that when we unwrap it, it has an area like so. Um, and so if you were to look at it, um, you, you would have multiple cylinders like this. If we were to, um, this area is comprised of multiple parts that get revolved. And so if we sum these all up, we are going to get a volume. So this, uh, the volume is going to be the sum because the integral is the sum from zero all the way out to four, where it touches here, of a, y, d, y. So we're summing, oops, um, we're summing up all these areas, right? The area of these cylinders. And the reason that I put a, a y as a function of y is because we're summing them up vertically, right? Um, and they're definitely functions of y because as we can see, as we move up the y-axis, the cylinders, they get bigger and bigger. So this is definitely an area that changes as a function of y. Um, and so that is a y. So now we're going to think about how we're going to express this area here, right? Um, well, the area, this is this purple thing right here is the area of that cylinder. And now let's think about it. Um, so the first component is this section right here which corresponds to this, uh, this width here. So this width, we can see that it's just, it's the height of this orange curve, right? It's the difference from where it touches this orange curve all the way out to the y-axis. So um, if we go up here, like in the bigger one, we can see that it's defined by where it touches that orange curve like so. So from here, we can see that it's just the value of the orange curve, which is 4y squared minus y cubed. So that's the um, blue line. And the thing that we're missing here, let me put that in a different color, um, is the base of my cylinder, which is given by a circle here. That is a circumference, right? If we unwrap it, we can see that these are equivalent. And now a circle is given by 2 pi r the circumference of it rather. And now we just have to think about how to express the circumference as a function of y, because it definitely does change as we move on along the y-axis. So here we can see that uh, this radius here, and uh, I've made a mess with all these colors, but I'm gonna do the last one here. Um, I'm gonna do that in bright yellow. It's just from the distance from the center all the way out to where it touches this radius right here. Um, and so that radius is going to give me the radius of my circumference. And as we can see, this radius is just the height of y, right? So for example, um, for this bigger one here, it goes from zero all the way out to wherever it touches it in the y axis. So the radius is just a value of y. Therefore, we have here that the circumference, um, let me put that in my original color, the circumference here is just 2 pi y. Therefore, uh, my length here is going to be 2 pi y. And so the area is given by base times height. Um, and the base is 2 pi y times the height, which is 4y squared minus y cubed. Therefore, I have an expression of y, right? Um, so I'm just going to leave this 2 pi outside because it's a constant and distribute this y. So that gives me 4y cubed minus y to the power of 4. And this is my expression for my area, right? Uh, this here gives me the expression for all these rectangles that wrap around the x-axis as I move from 0 to y. Um, so once we have this, 
we basically have an expression for my volume. Therefore, the volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 4 of ay dy, and ay is 2 pi that goes outside because it's a constant times 4y cubed minus y to the power of 4 and all of this times dy. Um, so once we have this, we are just going to integrate it. So that's 2 pi times um, 4y to the power of 4 over 4 minus y to the power of 5 over 5 evaluated from 0 to 4. So this is the same thing as um, 2 pi times, let's see, that 4, 4 cancels. So that is 4 to the power of 4 minus 4 to the power of 5 over 5. Uh, that's the upper boundary. And the lower boundary, um, we don't care about it because it's just going to go to 0, right? So if we calculate this, this is going to give us, uh, let me put that in my calculator. Um, this gives me 512 pi over 5. So yeah, that is the volume that I get. Um, when I sum up all these cylinders that wrap around the x-axis, whose width uh, is the length where it touches the orange curve and whose height is just 2 pi y because that's the circumference of the circle that wraps around it.